Hi everyone, Dr. Sarah Donovan here talking about interactive read alouds and how to use picture books in the high school classroom to make reading joyful and fun, but also incredibly rich in a variety of different texts so students can see how similar themes and topics and craft are used in the different types of genres and forms. And I think that this also um, improves analysis when students have texts that they can um, build upon and draw on. So I'm gonna share um, a few reasons why and how you can use picture books in the secondary classroom. All right, so interactive read alouds with picture books um, in the secondary English language arts classroom. And when we talk about secondary, we're referring to six through 12, grades six through 12. Um, but I am mostly focusing on nine through 12 because it is seems a little bit more radical to try to do it in those grades. Uh, so I want to talk to you just a little bit about um, what a picture book is. So you can see that picture book is a compound word here, not two separate words. Um, and so this is a when a text illustrations, the total design, um, it's an item of manufacture. It's a commercial product, so it's intended for, for sale. It is social, cultural, a historic document as well. But foremost, um, it's an experience for the reader or beholder. And in that way, it is art. So as an art form, it hinges on the interdependence of pictures and words. So you're reading the words and you're reading the images and making meaning in those two different modes. Um, so it's a simultaneous display of two facing pages and on um, the drama of the turning page. So it's really um, amazing to think about the artwork, the art of the picture and the images together and how they're making meaning together. Um, so when we think about the art of creating the picture books and the way that we can use them in the classroom, it's bringing art, a different kind of literary art into the classroom. So here's a few ways that you can enrich your curriculum with picture books. So the first one is to tap prior knowledge or build prior knowledge. So students who might have um, experience with a topic or experience with an author or experience with some of the literary devices, um, it, this is, allows them to tap into what they already know, but to see it in a different form. For students who may not have prior knowledge about a topic or experience, um, with an author or with the subject matter or with images or a certain type of symbolism, um, it's a way to build background knowledge. So it's in many ways an equalizer. So everyone has this shared uh, artistic experience of reading this picture book. Uh, you can use it anytime during the unit, at the beginning, the middle, the end, um, depending when you need it. It's a very quick warm up. So, you know, picture book, interactive read aloud could be 10 minutes. Um, at the start of a class, or it could be used at the end of a class to draw a connection. So it's up for the teacher to decide. The second, it could be used for front loading um, or to introduce concepts and skills. So I'm going to talk about in just a second, if your um, class, for example, is reading a more sort of complex syntactical text like, uh, like Mamaday's um, memoir, for example, it might be helpful to read some picture books written by indigenous authors to sort of introduce some of the style, uh, language, imagery, uh, and the focus of some of the indigenous writing, which is typically very centered in landscape and time and place. Um, so front loading it, introducing some of those, some of the things that might uh, come up in Mamadeh's uh, memoir might be helpful to do with a picture book. Uh, next is text comparison work. Almost every state has a standard about text comparison. Um, so in Oklahoma, it's students will evaluate points of view 
and perspectives in more than one grade level literary or informational text and explain how multiple points of view contribute to the meaning of the work. So the picture book could be used as a method uh, for modeling and practicing this uh, comparison. So looking at two picture books and doing this comparison, uh, it can be used from the picture book into the core text, like Mamadei's uh, memoir. Um, it can be, um, so adding a third text, looking at a range of different perspectives, so it can just be an additional text, but looking at it as a picture book, how the images and the words communicate meaning versus a memoir and how that communicates meaning. So comparing the different kinds of um, genres and text forms. And then finally, it could just be its own literary study. You can do a study on a picture book. There's whole university classes <laughs> that do this. So if, there's, if it's good enough for a college, it's good enough for a high school, um, where students, you can do a unit on the evolution of a picture book or a type of picture book or a genre or um, a topic as it's represented in different picture books or by different authors. Like there's many ways of doing it. So um, I'm just really gonna focus on today ways that you, we can use the picture book to um, tap tap or build prior knowledge and also do a little from the reading. So for example, if um, this is a pretty common, um, not necessarily short story because it's a memoir, a short memoir. Um, many students in school use the prologue of um, Mamadei's The Way to Rainy Mountain. So just the prologue. Um, but it is quite um, co complex syntactically in the sentence structure. Uh, also requires quite a bit of background knowledge about the Kiawa people, um, landscape, a little bit about Mamadei's life. So it, it creates a, a sense of getting used to the, his writing style. So a picture book that has indigenous writer qualities, meaning it's kind of set in a specific landscape and um, has symbolism and uh, deep, rich meaning on the landscape and the people, um, it might be helpful to pair it. So in this short um, piece, Mama Day's piece is a memoir, it's 1969. He talks about his grandmother who was passed and he's visiting her. Um, he's traveling landscape, he reflects on history, he reflects on the Kiawa people as proud warriors um, and uh, shares some myths about the sky and the stars. So that's very, so thinking about using a picture book that front loads it, um, this is the We Are Water Protectors book that I had read recently. And I can see many uh, parallels. So first, this is Carol Lindstrom. Um, so she is Matisse. Um, she's a member of the Turtle Mountain, uh, Ojibwe Indian, so a different group. Um, she was born and raised in Nebraska and lives in Maryland, so also different landscape. So that's helpful for comparison. This book was written in 2020, so that's important for comparison. And it's in response to the Dakota Access Pipeline, pipeline protests. Um, and it tells the story of a, an Ojibwe girl who fights against the oil pipeline and so it has an activist um, sense as well. Uh, also in the writing style, there's imagery and symbolism and, uh, and elders caution. So in Mama Day's story, he talks about his grandmother and some of her stories and here there's a grandmother as well. So there's lots of um, places for a comparison that this would be really useful for. And the other part, as I said, there's um, tapping prior knowledge, the students, what you already know about Indigenous people, what you know about Indigenous writing, what have you written. Um, and then having shared, then being able to share just the picture book allows everyone access to at least one story. Um, and then you can move into the Mama Day story, which is a little bit more um, complex and it will take a little bit longer for students to unpack. Um, but it has similar, some similar features that would be useful for comparison. So in preparing to do the interactive read aloud, as I mentioned in previous videos, um, it is important to do a close reading and to think about the places and the things that you want to bring up for your students. Um, so if if I'm using it to front load or to tap prior knowledge in preparation for the Mama Day text, uh, then I really want to make sure that I'm pointing out specific things during the read aloud. So what I did was I 
as I went through the text, I, I don't know if you can see, there you can see, <laughs> uh, I wrote sticky notes on different pages about the places that I want to stop and the questions that I want to ask. So on this page um, here, as you can see, the pictures and the text work together. So this page says, we come from water. It nourished us inside our mother's body as it nourishes us here on Mother Earth. Water is sacred, she said. And then, so here I would want to stop and I have a sticky note that says, we see different water here. We talked about the earth and the water, which we know really well, but also there's um, this image of a, of a mother carrying a child. And I'm thinking about, okay, so this is high school, right? So it's not like they're little kids. Um, thinking about the water, the fluid in the mother's womb and how that's nourishing. And I think that that might be sort of what the author and the illustrator were getting at here. So I wonder how water will be used in this picture and the other ways that we are using water. So it's kind of like thinking, it's having me think about um, this image of water throughout the book. So with the Mama Dave piece, he talks about the sky a lot. So how that comes up again and again. So by front loading water coming up again and again, which is a notice and note strategy from Kenley Beers, I'm front loading that practice of noticing something coming up again and again, um, as I would hope that they would notice in Mama Dave's piece. And then on this is a, a poem or a refrain that comes up a couple different times with different images. Um, and I want to, I put a sticky note here because I want to say, you know, repetition is a poetic device, musical quality. Um, it's, and the language here is we stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. So it's interesting to think about um, the Mama Day piece, which is 1969. This piece is 2020. Um, we are still here. We are still on our land um, in 2020. It has the sense of, of claiming, it has the sense of repetition um, and this collective we, which is a very powerful. Um, and then they have this, it's contrasted with a single girl. See? So um, that's kind of interesting too. So I would say, why, you know, why might that be where they have this we and, and multiple people on this side and a single person on this a person on this side? And I might say, why might that be? And I would have people turn to your neighbor and, and talk about that. Um, other places that I made a sticky note um, is here where the wise elder um, is talking to the children. Um, and here's the language here. When my people first spoke of the black snake, they foretold that it wouldn't come for many, many years. And so on this page, I wrote a sticky note. Is there a wise elder in your family or life? And how does this illustrator also show time? Um, so there's kind of two questions here. One is reflecting on the role of an elder. Um, and the other is how to reflect um, time shifts, right? Um, which Mama Day does as well. We're kind of going past and present. Uh, and trying to blend the history. So in here, I would ask the students to think about how the author and illustrator are showing time. And I think I would like them to notice that the color here um, is sort of past and historic. Okay. And then this page says, now the black snake is here its venom burns the land, courses through the water, making it unfit to drink. So um, it's a contemporary issue about um, water contamination, right? Um, and so the, the snake, I would say, what do you notice about the shape of the snake, right? And it's the shape of pipes. Um, and then here, like you can say, the hair is um, woven like, like water really beautiful here. Um, and it says, take courage. I must keep the black snakes away from my village of water. I must rally my people together. And so we see the eye point of view perspective here 
um, first person. And so I have put a sticky note at the top. Is there a snake that you might want to rally us to fight against? So thinking symbolically, what are the snakes? What are the black snakes in your life um, or issues in the world that you care about that you want to fight against, right? Um, and so I would say turn to your partner and talk about that a little bit. I have other sticky notes. Um, here is a really beautiful illustration um, where people are holding hands and then there's a uh, um, black snake fighting. And then another, here we see the collective of people surrounding the same um, phrase, we are, we stand with our songs and our drums, we are still here. And so what does the snake symbolize here? What might the past snake be for the narrator? What might the past snake be for the author who's telling the story? Um, so I'm thinking about um, whether or not we can draw on what students have prior knowledge about indigenous people and the historical um, snakes that had contaminated the water or take their land or made life difficult. Um, and I, if I could elicit uh, language about genocide or indigenous people, or maybe they would say something about Columbus, um, but more so if we're using this at the beginning, we're doing it to elicit um, cap higher knowledge, build some background knowledge, and then also think about this, uh, this symbolism of the snake and the water that comes up again and again. So you get the idea. It's important to kind of like read through the text um, and put in some sticky notes so that when you get to those sections, um, you can pause and ask your students to think about it. So what makes it an interactive read aloud <laughs> uh, is that you are reading the text, pausing, posing a question, and having students do quick turn and talk to think about it. Um, so you can point to specific questions, um, ask students, elicit uh, their background knowledge, uh, encourage them to wonder, encourage them to notice. And in this way, you're sort of front loading some concepts, building some background knowledge, uh, allowing students to tap into what they already know. And this sets them up for the next text. So it's kind of scaffolding into something a little bit more complex, but also having the shared reading experience so that when you do move to thinking about text comparison or point of view comparison or perspective comparison or historical versus contemporary comparison, now you have these two texts that you can have these conversations about. Um, and then maybe students will choose a third text and that's what they'll do in their analysis on. There's many ways that you can build into it, um, but this is a very low stakes, accessible, um, collaborative, interactive kind of experience um, that can really do a great job of setting up uh, meaningful reading experiences. So I hope that you give them a try and I would really love to hear how it goes for you.